Welcome to Living Life. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with everyone today. Now, I think that we all have that experience of getting into more trouble after making excuses for our wrongdoings. Now, this would happen when we were young and thought that, for, that we could avoid these consequences through our shallow wisdom. But usually it would backfire and more punishment come our way. Now, making excuses is a common behavior that we tend to do when we face a situation that we do not want to deal with. So in other words, it is a way of avoid, to avoid taking responsibility for our actions. However, this just proves that we are responsible for the problematic actions and lets everyone know that who is responsible for what. Now, this was also a common thing for the Israelites. Whenever they faced the wrath of God for doing or living according to their instincts, they would just keep making excuses. Now, to these people, God speaks His word and foretells the judgment that will reign upon them. Zephaniah chapter 1, 1 to 13. The word of the Lord that came to Zephaniah, son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, during the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will sweep away everything from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. I will sweep away both man and beast. I will sweep away the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea and the idols that cause the wicked to stumble. When I destroy all mankind on the face of the earth, declares the Lord, I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all who live in Jerusalem. I will destroy every remnant of Baal worship in this place, the very names of the idolatrous priests, those who bow down on the roofs to worship the starry host, those who bow down and swear by the Lord and who also swear by Molech, those who turn back from following the Lord and neither seek the Lord nor inquire of Him. Be silent before the Sovereign Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared His sacrifice. He has consecrated those He has invited. On the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all those clad in foreign clothes. On that day, I will punish all who avoid stepping on the threshold who fill the temple of their gods with violence and deceit. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will go up from the fish gates, wailing from the new quarter, and a loud crash from the hills. Wail, you who live in the market district. All your merchants will be wiped out. All who trade with silver will be destroyed. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with nut lamps and punish those who are complacent who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Their wealth will be plundered, their houses demolished. Though they build houses, they will not live in them. Though they plant vineyards, they will not drink the wine. The book of Zaphaniah is a nebim, a prophetic writing from the prophet Zaphaniah. Now, Zephaniah prophesies the coming of the day of the Lord, when God will pour out His judgment upon them. Now, through this, the prophet is trying to encourage the people to return to God before this judgment comes. Now, throughout history, Israelites went through a never-ending cycle of sin, judgment, repent. Sin, judgment, and repent. Every time they face their judgment, they would line up their own reasons for their sins. They make excuse after excuse, trying to avoid the judgment when all God was asking for was for them to admit their sins and repent. But this time, Zephaniah's prophecy, it seems as though God was fed up with his people's excuses. In verse 7, it states, Be silent before the Sovereign Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those He has invited. Now, literally, God is telling His people to be quiet. Hush! Stop 
making excuses, this is your last chance to own up to your wrongdoings. And from verse 8 through to 13, God tells His people the consequences of their sins and their wrongdoings. And so if they keep making these excuses, putting everyone on judgment with those who do not come back to Him. Now, what does this mean for us? For those who do not know God and lived a sinful life, it is commanding you to believe in Christ Jesus and be saved. But for most people who are seeing this clip are born again Christians who believe and trust in the Lord. Now for us, God is telling us to own up to our sins. Don't just try to budge your way out of judgment, but instead be silent and hear what God has to say and ask God for His forgiveness. When we could do that, now the judgment, judgment won't be a scary thing that we need to face, but more of a blessing that we will not be the subject of God's wrath. Now, dear brothers and sisters, where do you stand? Are you a believer who keeps making excuses for the repetitive, repetitive sins you commit? Or are you a believer who asks God's forgiveness for your sins that you commit? Now, let us all be the later and face judgment as a blessing. Today, let us own up to our sins. Let us ask God for His forgiveness and live these end times with hope and blessings. Now let today's scripture be our strength and let us share this good news with our neighbors. Let us pray. Dear loving and graceful Father, we are sinners and today we ask for your forgiveness. Let your saving power set us free from our sins and judgment and live to glorify you. We thank you and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music>